Okay, this lesson is I can divide on a number line. It's our good old friend of number line. Back for a little bit more fun. Really useful in all sorts of situations. But first of all, let's just make sure we know what division is. Quick one, two, three questions for you on the board. I'd like you not only to answer the questions, but I'd like you to explain to a parent or whoever's there what is division. Pause. Okay, so division is when we share a, a number into uh, equal amounts. Okay, so for example, if I had uh, 6, okay, and I do 6 divided by 2, okay, I'm sharing it into equal amounts. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. I share it into two equal groups of 3. Okay, so let's have a look at what that means when I just said that. So 12 divided by 3. Well, look, if I share it into uh, three equal groups, there is one, two, three, and there are four in each group. So 12 divided by three equals four, okay? In other words, three times four equals 12. I can use something called the inverse to help me. We might look at that a little bit more later. So if I say 12 divided by three, I'm saying, well, three times what is 12? Well, three times four is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and that's what it looks like. So, 24 divided by 4, well, again, let's have a look. Let's split 24 into four equal groups. Here it is. There's 1, uh, 2, it should be a different colour, 3, and 4. How many in each group? Ah, oh, 6 in each group. I can check that I was right, because 6 times 4 is 12. Yeah, 6 times 4 equals 12. So, in other words, I'm saying, how many 4s in 24? There are six fours and 24, I'm there. So 36 divided by six, well, instead of me shading all of these, I'm just gonna think to myself, six times what is 36? How many sixes in 36? Well, there are six sixes in 36. Check that you got those answers uh, all right. Uh, and if you did, we're going to move on a little bit now. We're gonna have a little look at that inverse thing. So I said we can use Inverse, and just saying the word inverse doesn't really tell you much, does it? You need to uh, understand what inverse is. So let's put that first calculation up. Inverse is when I invert numbers, I swap the numbers around. I've got to keep the same numbers, but I can swap them all around, and it still makes the same answer. So, Jane, tell you what, let's change this up a little bit. Uh, let's say that it was 2 plus 3 equals 5. Okay, 2 plus 3 equals 5. Well, I know that also 3 plus 2 equals 5, and I know if I swap it around at 5, take away 2 is 3, 5 take away 3 is 2. This is showing the inverse, where I'm taking the numbers and I swap them all around. Okay, let's have a look at that when it comes to division. So, if 12 divided by 3 equals 4, I know that 4 times 3 equals 12. What else do I know? Pause. That's right. I also know that 3 times 4 equals 12, and 12 divided by 4 equals 3. I can swap these numbers around, can't I? Okay? Nothing else I can do. I can't say that 12 times 3 is 4, because 12 times 3 is 36. Okay? I, if I am multiplying, then the biggest number is always going to be at the end, isn't it? Because when I multiply a number, it gets larger. So my answer is always going to be the biggest amount. When I'm dividing, I start with the biggest amount. So whenever I'm dividing, I'm starting with the biggest amount, and I'm seeing how much of a number there is in that number. Don't worry if that's a little bit confusing. It's all going to make sense in a second. But I've got a quick challenge for you now. I'm going to put up a few numbers. What I'd like you to do is tell me what else you know. So look, 8 times 7 is 56, I'm going to pop that up there. Um, I'll also put um, 5 times 5 equals 25, and we'll do one more down here. Let's have the 7 times 3, actually no, let's do a division one at the bottom. Let's have 12 divided by 3 equals 7. Okay, what well, your job to do now on a piece of paper is uh, show me the inverse for all of these calculations. If you know this, what else do you know? Pause. Right, you should have worked out also that 7 times 8 equals 56. Okay, so when I'm timesing the biggest numbers at the end, now let's divide it. 56 divided by 7 
equals 8, 56 divided by 8 equals 7. Let's do the same thing down here. Well, 5 times 5 is 25, so 5 times 5 is 25. Actually, I can't really swap that around. 25 times 5, uh, sorry, 25 divided by 5 equals 5. Okay? That's pretty much everything, because if I go 25 divided by 5 equals 5, or 5 times 5 equals 25, it all stays the same. So that's, that's the inverse of that one. Let's check this last one. 12 divided by 3 is 7, so 12 divided by 7 equals 3. 3 times 7 equals uh, 12. Oh, I completely put that the wrong way around. I hope you were screaming at home. It wasn't 12, was it? It was 21. 21 divided by 3 is 7. 21 divided by 7 equals 3. 3 times 7 equals 21, and 7 times 3 equals 21. Okay, I really hope you spotted the mistake on the last one. I'd like to say I did it deliberately, but I didn't. It was just a mistake on my behalf. But we all make mistakes. It's about spotting the mistakes and correcting it as you go through. Okay, let's get to the point. Now, all of those are easy because I just use my multiplications, okay? I use my times tables. When anyone just says to me, oh, 36 divided by 6, I know my 6 times table. I know that 6 times 6 equals 36. I don't really need to think about it. If you are really thinking about it, then what I recommend you do is go to ttrockstars.com and get practicing your times tables. It's really important by the end of year three that you know all your times tables up to 12, okay? It's really important. So get doing that now and then come back to this later. Okay, so now you're thinking to yourself, when am I going to need a number line? Well, when the numbers get a little bit tricky. So, for example, if I had this question here, 52 divided by 4 equals something. Now, I don't know 4 times what equals 52. I, I know that 4 times uh, 12 is... Uh, no, I can't. No, that's too much. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit stuck here. I know that 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 11 is 44, 4 times 12 is 48. I've got to be honest, I don't know much more than that. So, I'm going to use a number line, and this is really good. We're going to use something called chunking, and you're going to see how easy this is. Okay, let's get our number line out. Now, where am I starting? Well, I'm actually going to start from zero. I know where I'm ending, because I'm seeing how many 4s are in 52. So I'm ending at 52. Now one way to do this, and this is the wrong way to do this, one way to do this would be to count up in fours, and I could work out how many fours. So I could go 4, 8, 12, 16. I could just keep doing that. That's not going to be very effective. So watch what I do. This is the trick. I think to myself, what do I know? Well, I know that 4 times 12 is 48. I already said that because I know my 12 times table. 4 times 12 is 48. If you don't know 4 times 12 is 48, you probably know that 4 times 10 is 40, and you could do it from there. So I know that 4 times 12 is 48. Well, then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to count on in fours. So 48, add 4, gets me to 52. Oh! I'm there. I'm done. How easy was that? I got to the end of my number line. Let me show you that in a different way, just in case you found that a little bit hard. Let's do that again. So here is my number line. I'm starting at zero. I'm getting to 52. I'm trying to work out how many fours in 52. Well, look at this. I'll do it a different way. I know that four lots of 10. So I know that, you know, 10 lots of four equals 40. I know that, don't I? 10 lots of 4 is 40. So I've got 10 4s there. That's the same as going like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But basically, I've done 10 jumps of 4. So I'm at 40. Now I think, right, from 40 to 52. Well, I might see that the difference is 12. And then I could think, well, that's just uh, 4 times 3, isn't it? Which is 12. So I do 10 plus 3 equals 13. If you found that too hard, well, let's just do jumps of 4 from 40. So 40, 44, 48, 52. And can you see I have done 10 jumps of 4 plus 11, 12, 13. Overall, there are 13 fours in 52. Okay, don't worry. Let's just try that again. Let's just make sure that we totally 
uh, understand that. So, let's do this. 51 divided by 3. What does it equal? Okay, don't worry, it's not hard. So I'm going to do my number line. We start at 0. I know where I'm getting to. I want to get to 51, don't I? So I'm seeing how many 3s are in 51. Let's do what I know already. I know that 10 threes are 30. Okay, I've done that bit already. Hmm, what's the difference between 30 and 51? Well, it's 21. If I'm using my brain, I would also know that 3 times 7 is 21, and 30 plus 21 is 51. So how many threes are there all together? Tell your partner, write it down, pause. So all together, I've done 10 jumps of three here, another seven jumps of three here, so I did 17 jumps of three. So 51 divided by three equals 17. Okay, let's have a little go uh, at some questions for you to have a little go at, and then I'll run over them at the end, and uh, we'll see how we do. So, We'll have 42 divided by 3. We'll have... Um, I don't want to make these too hard for you. I'm going to try and make them sort of manageable. 75 divided by 5. And we'll just have one more. Um, we'll have 56 divided by 4. Okay? So those are the calculations I'd like you to do. Off you go. Pause. So, you did a number line for all of them, yes? Number line for all of them, yes? Okay, so, zero to 42. My job is to find out how many threes in 42. Well, let's have a go. How many threes in 42? Well, I know, actually, I know that three times 12 is 36. I've got that bit already, okay? Now, I'm gonna jump on in threes. So, number three gets me to 39. Number three gets me to 42. How many threes were there? 12, 13, 14. That should be 14. Check that answer. Okay, let's do this again. Starting at zero, going to 75. How many fives in 75? Yeah, let's just, oh well, I know that five times 12 is 60. So, um, five times 12, is 60, so we've got 60 so far. Hmm, let's just count on in fives, I guess. Um, five gets me to 65. Five gets me to 70. Five gets me to 75. So I've got 12, 13, 14, 15 fives. Okay, that's one here. Zero to, uh, not four, 56. What am I doing? 56, okay. Well, I know that uh, 12, lots of 4, equals 48. Uh, oh, I can see the difference here, but I'm just going to count on anyway. Okay, another 4 equals 52. Another 4 equals 56. How many 4s are there all together? 12, 13, 14. Gosh, all well, my answers are quite similar, aren't they? Right, I'm hoping you've got that at home. What we're going to do Next time, we're going to have a little look at how we do division with remainders, but that is another lesson.